Tonight on The Proof is Out There, a UFO that defies gravity. I've never seen any device that can stop on a dime and take off at maximum velocity. A ping pong ball that defies reality. When I saw the tape after, it just looked unreal. And something in the waters of Alaska that defies zoology. Around the globe are videos. What the heck is this? Photos and sounds that defy explanation. Is it some kind of unidentified object? A plane that was literally frozen in the air. What are they? Some sort of bizarre mutation. Extraordinary claims need extraordinary proof. I'm Tony Harris, and as a journalist for more than 30 years, I've followed the facts where they take me. Now I'm bringing that spirit of investigation to the world's strangest sounds and images. We'll analyze each one with top experts. It's a credible case, it's a credible video. And pass a verdict on what it is. This video was clearly fake. The proof starts now. Good evening and welcome to The Proof is Out There. Let's do this. We've seen videos of UFOs zigzagging, tracking commercial aircraft, and even splitting in two. But this next video is something different. And if nothing else, it proves that what goes up does not always come down. November 2020 on the coast of Cornwall in southwest England, a live webcam viewer is recording a gorgeous sunset. But the footage captures something more than a postcard-worthy seascape. A glowing orb races onto screen, hovers, then rockets straight up and out of frame. Watch again. Rapid deceleration and then vertical flight. It appears to rocket almost 3,000 feet straight up in less than a second. That indicates some sort of space-time distortion. Anthropologist Michael Masters has a theory about who might be in such a craft. It's important to consider our own evolution and our technological and biological evolution in the sense that maybe they're us. Maybe they're coming from the future to examine their own hominin evolutionary past. Masters believes that if future humans can manipulate time to travel into the past, they might also be able to build spacecraft capable of these remarkable maneuvers. This would also make sense in the context of what we see in this video. As this craft flies in at tremendous speed and stops instantaneously and then accelerates at tremendous speed. G-force is a measure of acceleration, with one G the force Earth exerts on us. And at first glance, it looks like G-force generated by this object's acceleration would be off the charts. I've never seen any device that can stop on a dime and take off at maximum velocity. So I would suspect that if this is for real, it's either an experimental craft by the military or, let's face it, possibly an extraterrestrial civilization. The forces suggested by this video pose a technical problem for the time travel theory. Today's astronauts endure about three Gs on liftoff. At around six Gs, the average person can black out. Past 100 Gs, the forces can shatter bones and squash our organs. So if this is a craft transporting humans from the future, how would they survive? Is another explanation more plausible? Let's turn the video over to our experts. Forensic video analyst Michael Primo checks to make sure this video isn't a fake. I don't detect any evidence to support that this has been fabricated um, or that this object has been inserted into the video recording. I've examined dozens of UFOs and UAPs over the years, and I have seen some objects that travel at a high rate of speed. This is exhibiting similar characteristics. So the video is legit, and the object's rapid movement is consistent with other UFO sightings, but that doesn't rule out every existing human technology. A leading theory would be a drone. But Tim McMillan says a secret military drone wouldn't be out in public. And regulations for commercial drones make that explanation unlikely. First of all, for commercial drones, they are capped off at 300 feet for regulation purposes. So it's hard to get an accurate gauge on altitude and everything, but we can see it move through the cloud cover out of frame. So it definitely appears to be exceeding that 300 foot maximum that you would expect with a commercial drone. This one's unique. I don't know that I have a, uh, a very good explanation for it, frankly. 
Astronomer and video effects designer Mark D'Antonio wonders if the object might be something else entirely, a reflection. If this is a webcam, are we seeing this through a window? Does that mean there is something being put on the window, like a laser pointer that is moving across the window, causing this to look this way? But look at the rest of the frame. There are no other reflections, suggesting there's a glass window between the camera and the image it's recording. I can't tell from this, so I can't come to any reasonable conclusions. This one seems to have stumped just about everyone. So that leaves master's time travel theory. What does D'Antonio make of it? We've already figured out that we might be able to go faster than the speed of light by using uh, a warpage of space time. And NASA has got a funded lab looking at this because they think it's a possibility down the line. And recent research indicates that a wormhole, another warpage in space time, could be used to travel through time. You know, sometimes science fiction does become science fact and it's a possibility. So, our verdict? Well, it's not a hoax, and it's not a plane or a drone, and it's not a laser pointer. Until we can identify it conclusively, we'll consider this a genuine UFO. But look, we really want to get to the bottom of this. If you have any more information about this clip, please reach out and let us know. This little white ball may seem ordinary to you, and well, it is. Anyone who plays ping pong knows how to control its movement at least a little bit. But that control pales in comparison to what you are about to see. January 2021, with the COVID pandemic raging, many people around the world, including Canadian acrobat Adam Grondon, have been hoarding toilet paper and looking for novel ways to occupy themselves at home. It was a, during a snowstorm. We got stuck inside and I had nothing to do. And I had some crazy ideas. The idea involves Adam's skills as an acrobat, a roll of toilet paper, and a ping pong ball. Watch, from a perfect handstand, Adam launches the ping pong ball directly from his mouth through the rotating roll. Look again. It's even more nuts in slow-mo. His timing here has to be absolutely perfect, even if he wasn't already blindfolded and upside down. Of course, Adam posted the video, and of course, it instantly went viral. When I saw the tape after, it just looked unreal. And I got so many comments on the videos that, oh, it's fake, you know, but no, it's real, and this is why it's so impressive and cool. Adam isn't the only internet-famous ping-pong stuntman it's kind of become a thing. So how are these people able to pull off the impossible? Journalist Aaron McCarthy says it may be similar to the performance of elite athletes. For some people, time does seem to slow down when they're trying to pull off some stunt or make some shot. So for example, a baseball player who's at bat, time might seem to slow down as he's swinging. Studies have shown that gifted athletes often have more gray matter in at least five brain regions that handle perception and motor skills. But it's not just athletes. There are some people who have claimed that time slows enough for them that they can actually catch bullets out of the air with their hands or with their mouths. This was a claim that magicians made for hundreds of years. It actually escalated to the point where at least 12 people died attempting this trick. Harry Houdini himself removed the bullet catch trick from his act out of safety concerns. So don't get any ideas. As for ping pong balls, before we can determine just how impressive this feat of physics really is, we first need our experts to make sure it's not a fake. Yeah, my first thought with this is that, is it fake? It's pretty easy to uh, create a little 3D model of a ping pong ball and add it to the scene but I don't see any clues that indicate that it is fake. It looks very, very realistic, the way it comes out of his mouth, the way it comes out of this roll, the way it uh, changes in trajectory, it's very realistic. We're confident the video isn't doctored, so astrophysicist Hakim Olushehi examines whether Adam has some heightened ability to bend space and time. The physics of this is really interesting. So the first thing is, is that the toilet paper roll is swinging back and forth. So that's a pendulum motion. If you get the timing of when it's gonna be at that lowest point, 
then it is always gonna be there. You can predict it. These people aren't bending the rules of physics. They're mastering physics. But remember, the roll isn't just swinging, it's also rotating. That suggests some of that extra gray matter in athletes could be at work here. But physics professor Michio Kaku isn't so sure. When you first see these videotapes, you say to yourself, no way. These guys must be geniuses at this, this kind of activity. But then you realize the law of averages is still against you. You cannot do this every single time. And so when these feats are performed on videotape, you know that there was a lot of mistrials that were conveniently deleted. We asked Adam how many takes it took to get this shot, and he admitted he didn't get it the first time. Not by a long shot. I probably tried a thousand times because the toilet paper was turning pretty fast. I couldn't really see it. There's a specific sound when the ball goes in, and I heard it and I was like shook. Our verdict? While these trick shots are real, they aren't proof of some superhuman ability beyond extreme persistence, which is a characteristic that I, for one, do consider heroic. The sudden and mysterious disappearance of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 in 2014 captivated people the world over. There are many theories as to what happened to the Boeing 777 carrying 239 souls. Now a pair of brothers believe they have found the truth and the plane. In September 2019, the fate of MH370 continues to confound investigators. The majority of the search has taken place over the ocean, but British video producer Ian Wilson suddenly has a thought when revisiting details of this case. What if the lost Boeing 777 had actually crashed on land in an area where it would be hard to find, such as a remote jungle? In his free time, Ian begins pouring through satellite maps of the possible flight paths, concentrating on the rainforests of Southeast Asia. I traced the arc that runs from North Asia down to the Southern Indian Ocean. I was hoping I would see like a load of crushed trees. After days of scrolling without any luck, Ian suddenly stumbles upon something unmistakable, an object shaped exactly like an airplane deep in the Cambodian jungle, 60 miles west of Phnom Penh. If you really go into the 3D view, it looks as though the plane is laying up against a mountain. It's almost at a 45 degree angle. Now, in the years since the disappearance, airplane pieces suspected to be from MH370 have washed ashore all over the Indian Ocean, but only a small number have actually been confirmed to be from this exact plane. Some reject those findings and the whole idea that the plane crashed in the ocean based upon how much fuel was on board and the possible directions this aircraft could go, the search area could be anywhere within a very large radius of the ocean or in some remote area in Southeast Asia. Ian and his brother Jackie decided to pool their money and trek out to that spot in the Cambodian jungle themselves. The fact that it linked up with the last known position of the plane on this arc, that's enough to go and check it out but it proves more treacherous than they ever expected, even to their local guides. Halfway through, these guys turn around and say, look, we're going back, we can't go any further. We got to a huge waterfall that they couldn't get past. The brothers eventually have to return home empty-handed. Planes vanish more often than you would think. Since MH370, seven other aircraft have gone missing around the world. But could Ian's discovery at least put to rest the questions about this notorious disaster? Our experts take the stick. First, aviation expert Lieutenant Tim McMillan determines whether a plane that crashed in a jungle would appear like the image Ian found on the satellite map. It looks very much like an airplane just sat down in the middle of the wilderness. I would not expect to see a big commercial plane like a Boeing 777 be able to land in that condition and not be destroyed. But even if somehow the plane managed to stay intact, McMillan doubts that this image is a Boeing 777. Just based on the scale that we have from these satellite images, uh, this object that looks very plane like is about 100 feet too short for a Boeing 777. 
So might this be part of the natural topography that Ian just mistook for an airplane? We know it's not snow because it would have melted, and there's no snow in Cambodia at that altitude. It's in the middle of a tropical jungle. And uh, there's, there's no indication that this is a, a random rock formation. It looks exactly like a plane. But there are no telltale signs of a crash landing. If this was a plane that had actually flown into this spot, we would see some kind of indication in the surrounding vegetation. Mixed conclusion, Ian did locate a plane, just not on the jungle floor, but in the sky above it. I think this is certainly not MH370, so it's another plane. And uh, it's just happened to have been caught in this satellite image. This is something that happens you know, surprisingly often. It just means there happens to be one caught on camera at that time. Our verdict, this is most likely a moving plane passing over Cambodia just as the satellite image was taken. But Ian and Jackie Wilson are still convinced that MH370 lies somewhere deep in the jungles there. Once they save up enough money, they say they are heading out on another expedition. The Inuit culture of Alaska is rich with ancient tales of magical and fearsome water creatures. Were those accounts just myths? or an early form of field research? Before you answer, watch this. October 2016, Craig McKay of Alaska's Bureau of Land Management is overlooking the Chena River in Fairbanks when he notices something extremely peculiar in the water. It looks to be around 20 to 25 feet long, and when we zoom in, it appears to be swimming against the current. I looked down and saw this really bizarre object. It was much larger than anything I'd seen in the river, and it was undulating or swinging back and forth in the current. It was really spooky. Given the location of this discovery, field researcher Ken Gerhardt says we should consider the local folklore. In Alaska, we do have a number of legends of water creatures. The Inuit culture talks about something called the Tizharuk which is a long serpentine animal with a long head, a prominent tail fin. There are many tales of the Tizharuk actually snatching people off of bridges or out of canoes and, and devouring them voraciously. Gerhardt says descriptions of the Tizharuk vary, but the most terrifying form is said to be a giant eel-like creature with transparent skin which not only allows observers to see still digesting victims, but also makes the creature less visible when stalking its prey. In addition, we have the Lake Iliamna monster, which is also known as the Jigignac. This particular monster has been reported several times. It's described as being 10 to 30 feet in length with a torpedo-shaped body and kind of a dull aluminum color. So, you know, we have to ask the question, could this be related to those stories? Early stories of the Jig Ignac described fish-like monsters traveling in groups and attacking canoes. So is that or one of its descendants what we're looking at here? Let's let the experts decide. Marine biologist Dr. Shea Conger says if this thing were a snake, it's unlikely to have accumulated snow on his back. And as for serpents... There's no water snakes in Alaska. This is because reptiles and amphibians are exotherms. They're reliant on the environment to maintain their body heat, and there really isn't enough heat to allow these species to persist in this area. So Dr. Conger turns for clues to the hydrology of the scene, the motion of the water. It seems to kind of be moving back and forth through the water, as you would expect an animal with a tail to be swimming against the current. But hold on, look again. When the video zooms out a little bit, you can actually see that this object doesn't seem to be moving forward at all. Rather, it's just fixed in place and being hit by the moving current downriver. Therefore, I conclude this isn't a biological object. Rather, it's some type of debris, like a piece of rope or fishing line encased in ice. So there you have it, our verdict. Based on Dr. Conger's hydrology analysis, this is a frozen rope. But sightings of Alaskan lake and river monsters continue to this day. Are they all misidentifications? Or is there really something down there? We'll keep looking for more video until we have an answer. 
And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep those cameras rolling.